So today we're going to have a very deep look into some plant cells and I would like uh, to also explain a little bit the important difference between plant cells uh, like you see over here and animal cells like for example we humans have. Hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. Well, the plant cells that you're looking at right now are from the water plant Egeria densa. It's a very common and well-liked uh, water plant by people who keep an, a home aquarium um, and it's also very good for observing some interesting and important processes of life. Uh, the reason is, is, is that the leaves are very thin, so we can directly place uh, the leaf of this water plant under the microscope. Well, uh, the most notable thing here is, uh, of course, uh, the movement of the chloroplasts. Those green round structures, these are the cell organelles that are responsible for photosynthesis. Um, they, they're green and they actually are those uh, parts of the cell, of a plant cell that uh, are, make the plant green. Um, the chloroplasts uh, catch sunlight and they uh, also um, absorb uh, the carbon dioxide to make food for the plant. So it's uh, very common and uh, one of the, some people say one of the most important uh, processes of life uh, because ultimately all of our energy that we use, so even when we eat uh, food, all, ultimately all of that energy can be traced back uh, to the sunlight. Um, yeah, the animals that we eat, they have eaten plants and then the plants again made um, yeah, food using the energy of the sunlight. So at the very beginning, we have uh, solar energy, so to say. So indirectly, we are all powered uh, <laughs> by the sun. Well, and those chloroplasts, uh, they move. Uh, and this uh, process is called cytoplasmic streaming. Um, and uh, the question is now, why do they do that? Well, uh, one of the reasons why the chloroplasts and other, also other cell organelles, why they move uh, around inside a cell, is, is because this helps in the redistribution of nutrients uh, inside the cell. Um, I've also read somewhere that um, it is believed that cytoplasmic streaming also helps to rearrange Range the chloroplasts in such a way that um, they're able to most efficiently catch the sunlight. Now, I don't know so much about that because uh, it's always in constant motion and movement, but apparently the cytoplasmic streaming can indeed be influenced by light and by temperature. But I have to tell you, I've not done experiments like this uh, yet, uh, but I would like to explore this uh, further in the future. But now to the important differences between plant and animal cells. Well, of course, plants do have those chloroplasts, at least those plant cells that are green. Not all parts of the plant are green, of course, but those parts that are green are responsible for photosynthesis. Um, and that is, of course, one important difference here. But we're also able to see a second important difference, and that is, is that the plant cells, that they have a cell wall. And the cell wall here is quite nicely visible um, because, yeah, we can see that where one cell stops and the other one starts. And we can also see that the chloroplasts, they do not go from cell to cell, but they stay within the cell. And uh, the cell wall is important because it provides structure and strength uh, to, to the plant. And then last but not least, the third most important difference is, is that uh, the plant cells, they have a large central vacuole, which we're not able to see here, but which we're able to infer. Um, the vacuole, that is um, a, a cell organelle, which is important for storing uh, water and also minerals. And uh, the vacuole is surrounded by a membrane, which is far too thin to be seen by a microscope, at least by a light microscope. But we know that it's, it's there simply by observing how the chloroplasts move. Because in some cells, if you look carefully, you can see that the chloroplasts are actually uh, streaming and and uh, cycling um, on the periphery of the cell. So they are going around next uh, to the cell wall. And the reason why they do that is, is because in the middle of the cell, you have uh, the large central vacuole. So they're not able to go through the vacuole, but they have to basically uh, move around it. Um, and uh, now some of the cells, or I would say rather many of the cells, um, appear to have the chloroplasts also in the middle. Um, however, um, this does not mean that uh, the chloroplasts are actually in the middle of the cell because the cell is three-dimensional. So those cells still have a vacuole in the middle but the chloroplasts are either above the vacuole or below the vacuole and when you look at uh, the cell now from the top then it appears as if the, cell, uh, the, the chloroplasts are in the center but, but actually uh, they're not. You know, so you see that uh, simply by looking at uh, those uh, um, cells we can already see quite a, a few important uh, uh, distinctions between plants um, and animals and if you want to observe also plant cells under the microscope then I do have to tell you you probably have to cut uh, the tissue, the plant tissue into very thin sections unless you're also using 
a plant uh, that has very thin leaves because if you just put a leaf directly under the microscope in most cases it's far too thick um, and you're not able to see anything here and that's why I've chosen the plant uh, Egeria densa because uh, the leaves are extremely thin and uh, quite transparent so we're able to see the processes uh, quite well. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, do leave your comments um, and uh, your, also your own experiences uh, with uh, plant cells and uh, plant cell microscopy specifically. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.